Hello and welcome to Dielectric Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to be deviating slightly from my traditional uh, electronics-oriented videos in favor today of a plumbing-related video. So if you're more interested in electronics, feel free to skip this video as the next upcoming set of videos will most likely be uh, in the electronics uh, field as well. But I thought to give my ch uh, channel a bit of diversity, I would uh, add some more fields to my uh, repertoire of content. So this is a Peerless P88103LF-SD-L. It's a uh, retractable uh, kitchen sink faucet with a combined mixing valve. Uh, so rather than having two valves for hot and cold, you have the same combined valve. I've got a couple of uh, vinyl mesh hoses with the half inch iron pipe size connector on one end and the 3 8 inch angle stop connector on the other. Now this uh, package comes with a few key components. The actual sink vessel comes with a supply line hose with the two input lines and it also comes with a soap dispenser as well as the requisite installation hardware. So we're going to be installing this today to replace the existing kitchen sink which I will show you in a second. So here's the existing sink. Now this one is uh, fairly old, it's probably at least 10 years old, and as you can see, some severe corrosion has set in on the swivel, uh, swivel point. Now the biggest problem with this is it's actually disadhered itself like this from the actual mount underneath, and as a result, uh, we've actually had to remove the aerator from the end, this part, because otherwise it builds up too much pressure and it actually pops off. So today's exercise is going to be replacing this with the new unit and uh, one of the hardest parts about installing a new faucet is actually removing the old one because usually the nuts on it get very corroded so it gets stuck in place and the old gasketing and plumber's putty can get quite hard as well. So initially for our tool set for this we're going to go in with a pair of, uh, a pair of pump pliers and an adjustable wrench. Additional tools may be necessary depending on the difficulty of the project. So before we proceed on this, we're going to have to shut off the water supply. Now there are two ways to do that, which I'll show you in a minute. Now when you shut the water off, you have the option to either shut it off here at the angle stop, which just isolates the one fixture that you're using, or you can shut it off at the main entrance to the house. Now for this type of project, I usually recommend disconnecting the water at the main supply to the house because these angle stops have a real tendency to leak after they've been used when they haven't been run for a long time. So I like to leave these in the on position, not mess around with the valve, and shut it off at the house. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to disconnect these hoses and get to work on the faucet above. So now that I have the house water pressure shut off, I'm going to begin to proceed and remove these uh, old hoses from the angle stops here. Now I've opened the valves on the sink up above, to make sure that there's not going to be any uh, huge amount of back pressure on this, but you can expect some water to flow out from the pipe still. So this is why I have a uh, glass catch container underneath, ready to pick up any uh, drips that are going to come out of here. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'll start with just the pump pliers, and I'm going to be very careful not to over bend this copper pipe in the process, and I'm just going to start loosening it up, not quite hand tight yet. See some water is coming out with some sediment in it it looks like. There we go. Hose is disconnected and the catch cup is catching most of the drips. I'm going to now proceed to do the same with the hot, which I won't show on camera since it's basically the same process. So I've taken the liberty to disconnect both of the original supply lines from the sink faucet fixture. Now, as you can see, there's quite a bit of corrosion and residue from leakage on the old fixture, and uh, this would potentially make it difficult to remove. However, I suspect because the nuts that are holding the fixture on are made out of plastic, it shouldn't be quite so difficult. So I'm going to get my pump pliers and I'm going to approach these nuts. I may actually have to get a bigger set or use the adjustable wrench 
So let me adjust the radius of the plier and let's see if I can get, get at this thing. Start unscrewing, there it goes. So that one's loose and we'll do the same for this one. If I can get a good angle on it. Looks like it's coming loose, it may even be hand tight by now. So we'll start unscrewing that as well. Yep, now we should be able to unscrew both of these. So these retaining nuts are what hold the faucet onto the sink. So we sh once we've removed these, we should be able to pull the faucet directly up and remove it. So I'm taking this one off and I'm sure there's all kinds of crud falling on the camera right now. That's okay. So now that those are removed, I should be able to pull the sink off the top. And for the moment of truth, Yes, it lifts right off. Now I'm going to have to clean up this area underneath because there's a lot of residue left over from the old fixture from all the corrosion. But once I've cleaned that up, we can start installing the new unit. So I've taken the liberty to install the es escutcheon onto the bottom of the faucet. That's this part here that makes, uh, makes the seal against the surface of the sink. Now even though this does include its own gasket, which is this black plastic part you see here, I strongly recommend adding a layer of plumber's putty, which is this compound here, around where the gasket's going to seat. Now what that's going to do is it's going to provide an extra layer of waterproofing to make sure that you don't have water penetration to the underside of the sink where it can cause water damage and other problems. So the way that you want to make plumber's putty work is get out like a maybe a half a handful of the putty and what you want to do is you want to knead it into a long sort of snake that you can then put around here. So you want to sort of elongate it in a way and you can, you can uh, cut it into separate pieces if you need to, but you want to make sure you cover all the area around that region. So make yourself a little snake of plumber's putty and it doesn't have to be super uniform and just sort of lay it where the escutcheon is going to make contact with the sink. And you'll have to usually do a couple of passes at this to get a good amount on. But what's good to remember is once you put this on, you can always trim it off later using the uh, once the escutcheon is installed. So you'll make the rest of your plumber's putty, line it up where it needs to go. I'll get one more piece there. And then you'll trim off the excess thereafter. So here we go, we have our putty in place. Now what we can do is engage the, or line up these faucet connections so they go through the center hole, making sure that none of the threads get damaged in the process, and uh, make sure the gasket is on the threaded parts. Also make sure you're installing it the right way around, it should say Pureless on the front and just set this down. Looks like I may have gotten my putty a little bit too far out, so I'm actually gonna redo that so it's further in. So before you tighten the nuts on the bottom, you wanna make sure the escutcheon is square with the uh, backsplash behind the sink. And you wanna make sure it's not at a weird looking angle. Now we can always adjust it slightly after we put the nuts on, but uh, it's best to have it in generally the correct position when you first start. So now we'll go back underneath and I'll show you how to set up the retractable line and install the mounting nuts for the escutcheon. So now that we've positioned the faucet in place, next we're going to mount it up with these uh, provided nuts. Now these mounting nuts go onto the underside of the escutcheon and uh, theoretically hold the sink in place or hold the faucet in place. So the trick is going to be getting them lined up on the threads. And we'll get that one just a little bit tight, but we don't want to off balance it. So we want to immediately get the other one on as well. It's a good idea to wear some goggles while you're under here, because otherwise a lot of crud falls in your eyes and it gets very annoying. So initially I'm going to just tighten these hand tight and we'll give them an extra quarter turn or so with the wrench or with the pliers 
once it is decently secure. So those are about hand tight. Now I'm going to grab my pliers, get them into the right radius, and we're just going to give these Oops, I bumped the camera. Roughly an extra quarter turn like that. And I'll do the same on the other side. If I can get the angle right, it's kind of an awkward position. There we go. Now we can go up on top and see if it still looks good. So it seems reasonably secure now. So I'm going to just peel back our plumber's putty and we can properly clean this up later on. It should just sort of peel away. And once we get this off, now we can connect all the hoses. So it comes with this quick disconnect connection for the faucet portion that's retractable. And what the instructions say you're going to want to do is you want to mate this connection up with this, uh, this nipple with these washers or O-rings on it. Now it looks like it's got the two clip tabs on these two sides and the two receiving tabs on those sides. So we're probably going to want to line it up roughly like this, it would look like. All right, I don't know how I feel about a quick connect holding back all that pressure, but luckily at least it's not going to be in use all the time. Only when the faucet is switched on will this have any pressure behind it. So it also happens to come with a zinc counterweight. Now this counterweight has to be installed on the retracting side. So you want to make sure your sink is fairly well retracted and then put it somewhere in the uh, before the loop at the bottom, but not uh, so high up that it's going to interfere with the retraction. So somewhere around here would be good. So we'll just slide the hose, or we'll, we may have to let some more tension out of that screw. And we'll see now if we can get it to slide on. Yep, there it goes. And it does come with another screw for the other side. So I'll insert that other screw. Oops, looks like it goes in from this side. And I'll get both of these tightened down and then I will report back. Now that the weight has been installed, we can start installing the supply lines. Now we'll start with the hot side and the hot is the one with the sticker on it, the label. And it'll actually say for hot water side on that label. And what you wanna do is you wanna line up the half inch iron pipe size uh, connector on your new braided hose. And uh, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get the thread started, especially with these plastic thread uh, receivers. So try and get it lined up as best you can. That's really not wanting to go on there. There it goes. And then what you wanna do is you want to tighten this down until it's just about hand tight. And again, then give it just a little bit more with the pliers but you want to be very careful that you don't accidentally twist these copper pipes because that will damage them. Now, as you can see, I'll show you the other side, the other uh, one of these. Inside here, there is a rubber gasket. So you're not relying on these plastic threads to actually seal. It's this rubber gasket that's actually going to make contact with the pipe on the other side. So you really don't have to get it that tight, just even hand tight, with a little extra torque should be good enough. What we can do is just check to make sure it's not leaking once we repressurize the system. So I still didn't get this right. Really, these plastic things do not get along very well with the copper or the brass receivers. Tighten this down sufficiently. And as I mentioned before, hold the copper pipe while you're doing your final tighten down to make sure you aren't going to bend or break that copper. All right, now we can connect these to the angle stops. 
So connect, to connect the lines up to the angle stops, you can use a similar procedure as, uh, as we did to remove the lines, except in reverse. You want to get the hose lined up as closely as you can with the threads, and you have to get it to catch, which is always a bit troublesome. Always be sure you're not stripping the threads either. But once it makes, uh, makes contact, you tighten it down as much as you can. And on this one, you definitely do want to use pliers because getting the uh, angle of uh, the angle of the fulcrum far enough with your fingers is almost impossible on there. Your lever arm needs to be greater. So just tighten it down until it gets a little bit challenging to turn. You don't want to over tighten it because you'll strip the threads or over compress the gasket in there. But just tighten it down until it feels reasonably solid. And remember, you can always tighten it more if it leaks, so it's not really a big problem if you get it a little bit under tight the first time. Better that than to ruin the fitting. So now I'll do the other side, the hot side, and we'll pressurize it and see how it works. Well, I've repressurized the system and there were no leaks underneath or anything. And in addition to that, the sink is working perfectly. So I can turn on the hot water this way. I can vary it to cold and there's a bit of air in the pipes because of the uh, having the water off. It's retractable. And check this out. I didn't even know it could do this, but it can actually, well, it's not supposed to switch back, but it can actually switch to a shower head versus a direct flow. So that's pretty fancy. But all in all, I'd say it was a successful installation. There are no leaks underneath. The faucet's working the way it's supposed to. I sprayed some water around the perimeter here to see if it would leak out underneath, and it doesn't look like it is, so the plumber's putty is doing its job. Now the only other thing that it uh, came with that I'm probably going to want to install is it actually came with a soap dispenser. So that actually goes here where your vacuum breaker might otherwise go for the dishwasher. Now I use a high loop system for my dishwasher drain, I don't use a vacuum breaker, so I should have no problem installing this soap dispenser. But since that's not really part of the original faucet video, I'll do that off camera. So I hope you learned something about uh, installing a faucet today. Hopefully this plumbing video was acceptable, even though it wasn't exactly in the genre of electronics videos. Thanks for watching Dielectric Videos, and I will see you next time.